as we're getting toward the end of our Photoshop demos, I want to throw in a couple extra features just so you know how they work. One of them is called Content Aware Scaling. So in order to show you that, I'm going to go to File and Open, In Folder 10.2, Content Aware Scaling. I'm going to open up this simple image of this rock off the coast of Dana Point. Okay, and this kind of situation happened to me a lot when I was working as a graphic designer. We would want a photographer to shoot the cover shot for a magazine. And then they would send us a horizontal image. It would just blow my mind like, dude, when's the last time you bought a horizontal magazine? What the heck? So we need to somehow recreate this image or reformat this image for a vertical Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. What I did on this photo is I wanted to edit the photo. Okay, so I've got a background layer. You can't edit a background layer. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to call that rock. That's what's in the photo. That's what I'll name it. Okay, so now the problem is if I were to just hit command T and try to pull the side the whole thing's just gonna turn smaller and smaller like a stamp. It's still going to be a horizontal photo. So transforming is not gonna work. On the upper left corner of my keyboard, I'll hit the escape key to escape out of the transformation. And I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna hit Command T one more time, but this time I'm gonna hold my Shift key. But now I'm crushing and distorting the photo. And that obviously is not what we want either. So in the upper left corner of my keyboard, I'll hit the escape key again. What I want to do is somehow squeeze this into more of a horizontal or a vertical, squeeze the ends in, but not distort this famous landmark. So in order to do that, you have a different type of scaling. It's called edit content aware scale and now when I pull the side notice dang it it's pulling in the sides but it's also squishing the photo what the heck now the rock doesn't even look the same it's distorting my photo okay but I'm on the right track so I'm going to hit the escape key one more time so here's how I did it okay I had this photo it's an editable photo. Edit, content aware scale. Then I held my shift key. And notice how the left side of the photo comes in, but the rock hasn't changed. Hold shift and pull the right side in. Notice as I pull too far, the rock is going to get squished as well. Okay, I'm so close, but I'm still distorting this stupid photo. So in the upper left, I hit the escape key one last time. Okay, what I did to protect this rock is I made an alpha channel right here. Or I'm going to make an alpha channel. Okay, there's a method for protecting what's in the photo instead of distorting it. So on my channels panel, I'm going to go to my elliptical marquee. I'm going to start in the middle of the rock and hold my option or alt key and just drag an ellipse around that rock right in there. Okay, something like that. Big bubble around the rock. Then I'm going to go to select menu, save selection. And for the name of this, I'm going to call this Protect the Rock. There it is on my channels panel. I've saved a selection. Okay, I'm going to hit Command D. We'll deselect that. And then I'm going to click on the name Protect the Rock. Okay, it's not going to protect it very well if you have a hard cut edge because as we. Um, distort the photo, you're going to see these edges. So I want this to have a nice soft edge to it. 
and you know that your blur filter can provide soft edges. So I've got this ellipse, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to crank this up to about 45. Give it a nice soft edge. And I'll click OK. Okay, back over here on my channels panel. I got to come back to my photo. So I click on the letters RGB. That's my composite of all the red pixels, green pixels, and blue pixels. Okay, now what I can do is edit menu, content aware scale one last time. But there is a button right up here called protect. The only thing Photoshop is going to protect is what's in an alpha channel, a saved selection, that bubble that I made around the rock. Protect the rock. Don't let me distort that. So now when I hold shift, I can pull this side in, pull this side in. Notice the rock is not changing. The ocean is changing. The waves are getting a little shorter, but the rock is still good. I like that. There we go. Now, the only problem I have for a second here is I've basically turned a horizontal photo into a square and that's fine. I'll hit return, but I don't buy square magazines. Okay. Nobody does. They're vertical. And I also don't want all this space. So what I can do with this photo is simply go to image and trim. Photoshop is going to ask me, what are you trying to trim off of this file? Transparent pixels, the grid. Then it's going to ask me, okay, trim them away from what edge? All of them. And I click, okay. It's like an instant crop. Okay, what I need is more space at the top. So I'm going to hit Command and Minus a couple of times right there. With my Crop Tool, not only can you cut apart or cut away pieces of a photo, but you can extend the amount of space for a photo. So let's make it like that, more of a vertical. And I'll hit Return. I've just extended the amount of space for more sky. So the problem in the past is if I wanted more of an empty sky up here, I would have had to take my clone stamp. This was really hard to do. And the reason for that is because the sky is constantly changing as it goes up. We've got this beautiful smog. So if I option click down here and paint up there, you can see the colors don't even match. Well, now in Photoshop, you don't have to worry about that. Okay. I'm just going to go to image. I'm sorry, edit and content aware scale again. Now, when I hold my shift key, watch my sky. I get more and more seamless beautiful sky enough of that photo retouching i don't need it i'll let photoshop do the work for me i hit return now i've got my vertical shot plenty of space for the masthead plenty of space for subtitled articles that are going to appear i could put my upc symbol right here now i've converted that photographer's work into a nice vertical shot and, you know, you might look at this and say, okay, I see what you did by squeezing in the sides, but look what it did to the waves over here. I mean, the waves should come crashing in parallel to the shore, not turning and going at an angle, which I agree. That doesn't look right. But that's the beauty of my clone stamp, my friend. Option click and clone out the water. Option click and we'll clone out. Option click and we'll clone those out. So now, what are you talking about? This water goes fine. Beautiful. Nobody's going to question me because I'm the designer. That's what I do. So there you go. That is how you use content aware scaling. So you can call this image content aware cover, like the file content aware cover art. Last name, first name, content aware cover. Show me you know how to do it. 
and we're almost done.